Today I'm going to share with you guys my favorite way to cook a steak, and that's to cook it in the sous vide. It produces the most juiciest, tenderest, restaurant quality steak that you can imagine. It's perfect every single time. It's easy to use. It's foolproof because you can just leave it in the water bath for a couple hours, come back and finish it off. And the three ways I'm going to show you to finish off the steak is one, we're going to grill it. The second one, we're going to pan sear it. And the third one, we're going to blow torch it. So if you want to learn how to get the best steak ever, then keep watching. Using a sous vide to cook your steaks used to be something that only high-end restaurants did. But now there's a ton of companies out there that are selling immersion cookers to the home cook. So it's really easy to do at home. And the benefits of cooking it in a water bath with an immersion cooker is that it cooks it at that desired temperature. It gets it up to that perfect medium rare temperature of say 131 degrees and it maintains it. It does not go any higher, it does not go any lower, as opposed to cooking your steak in the oven or on a grill or in a pan. It's just really hard to maintain that perfect temperature and really easy to overcook or undercook your meat. With using the sous vide, you don't have to worry about that at all. This is really a foolproof method. The first step for making your sous vide steak is to prepare your water bath. And I use a big tub like this. I purchased this off of Amazon. I'll have it linked down below on where you can get this. It's not necessary to get a big giant plastic tub like this. You can use a stock pot or any large pot that you have, um, any vessel even, I think you could even use a cooler if you wanted. Um, but I like this just because it has square sides so I can clip more proteins around the edges as opposed to like a round, round pot you might not get get as many bags of protein in here as you'd like. You want to fill the tub up with enough water so that your sous vide immersion cooker reaches and it's fully submerged and so that all of your bags of protein, every nook and cranny is fully submerged in the water too. And I'm using warm water. This will actually help speed up the, the process a little bit of getting the water to your perfect temperature. Once you have your water bath all set up, now it's time to add your steaks. And you can use two different methods to adding steaks to bags. Some people like to use a vacuum sealer to add their proteins to. Some people use Ziploc bags. I like to use a Ziploc bag just because I, I find that easier. I have gallon Ziploc bags all the time. One of the benefits of using a vacuum sealer is that you're sure that nothing's gonna be leaking into your bath water. One of the disadvantages is that sometimes it can mush all of your proteins together. So when you do bag them, make sure that you bag them vertically instead of horizontally, because sometimes that when it starts to compress the air out, everything just gets mushed together and you don't get even cooking all around. With a Ziploc bag, you don't really have that issue. You can still get most of the air out. Again, I recommend putting your steaks in vertically rather than horizontally if you're putting in more than one steak in at a time, just so that it doesn't lie down on top of each other and you won't get even cooking. And there's a special trick to getting all of the water sucked out if you're using a Ziploc bag. Basically what you wanna do is have the bag open on the top, just a little bit open, like about an inch or two um, open, not fully sealed on the top, and slowly submerge it down into the water. The water, as it's sinking, it will push that extra air up and then you just seal the bag. If your bag starts to sink, then you successfully sucked out all the air. If it floats, it still has air in it. So do the whole process again. And next we just clip our Ziploc bags to the side of the water bath. You can use clothes pins, binder clips, whatever clip that you have that's gonna hold on tight to that Ziploc bag. Now to get a perfectly cooked steak to your desire, you can use this temperature range. For rare steaks, set it from 120 to 129. For medium rare, you're gonna do 130 to 135. For medium, it's gonna be 136 to 144. And if you like a done steak, don't even bother with sous vide cooking because there's really no point. You just cook the hell out of it on the grill or on the pan. 
I'm gonna let these steaks cook for one to two hours. It all just kind of depends on the thickness. If your steak is around an inch thick, then you wanna let it cook for like an hour to an hour and a half. If it's thicker, if it's like two inches thick, then I'd say let it go for like two hours, two and a half hours. You really can't overcook a sous vide steak. It's always gonna maintain that internal temperature, that medium rare temperature, if that's what you're going for. The longer you do cook it, it can start to get more tender and mushy and start to dry out the meat, but that really doesn't happen until you've let it sit in that water bath for more than like three to four hours. Once the steaks are finished, you wanna remove them from the water bath and they're gonna look disgusting. Like look at this nasty gray color. This does not look pretty at all. It's going to taste good and it's gonna have that beautiful pink color inside, but the outside's disgusting. So we need to finish the steak off. So like I mentioned before, I'm gonna cook it three ways. I've got three steaks here. So one of them I'm going to grill. The second one I'm going to cook on a pan and the third one we're gonna blow torch it. But before we do that, we need to do two steps. The first step is to dry off your steak. Moisture is the enemy when it comes to grilling or pan searing the steak. So you wanna pat it dry completely. And then our next step is to cool it off. So we've already cooked our steak to our desired temperature. If we throw a steak that's 131 degrees right onto the pan or right onto the grill, it's gonna heat up faster. And it doesn't give us enough time to get that beautiful golden crust on the outside. So I recommend refrigerating it first for 10 minutes. This will just kind of cool it off a little bit just to buy us some time so that we can cook it on the grill or on the pan or torch it for an additional one to two minutes on each side. To cook these steaks on the grill, I'm just literally putting them on the grill. This is a high heat grill. We're gonna cook them over direct heat and cook them on all sides for about one to two minutes until it has that beautiful golden crust. For the blowtorch method, we are taking a blowtorch with a can of proach pane and we're just gonna sear it all over the outside with some heat. Again, cook it for one to two minutes on each side. And for the pan sear method, I'm going to be using a cast iron skillet. You can use whatever skillet you want. I would use something maybe aluminum based or cast iron, avoid a nonstick skillet because we do want to get a beautiful crust on the outside. I've added some oil down. This is just a neutral oil. I like to use olive oil. And then I'm putting in a couple tablespoons of butter too, just for some flavor. And I'm gonna cook this on both sides for about two minutes and then continue to spoon the butter and oil mixture over the top just to add a little bit more juiciness and flavor to my meat. And here's our finished products. They all look beautiful. Inside it's the perfect medium rare color. And honestly, they all taste amazing. I didn't have one that really stuck out over the other. They all taste really, really good in terms of flavor. Some people do say that when you cook it with a, a blow torch at the end that it can have a little gassiness flavor of like that propane. Not gassy pee fart, but gassy from the propane. Um, but I didn't notice that at all. I hope that this video inspired you guys to explore the sous vide cooking. You can use it to make other proteins as well from chicken and fish. You could even use it to cook vegetables. I've even seen the people use it to cook desserts. It's a great way to meal prep your proteins for the week. You can cook all of your protein in the sous vide on a Sunday night and then each night that you want to have that protein, be it chicken or steak, Throw it back in the sous vide for 30 minutes and then finish it off on the grill or pan sear it. 
Visit my website, ketofocus.com, for more tips on how to cook with the sous vide. Give this video a thumbs up if you're gonna try cooking the sous vide method, and have a good one.